Hey guys, what's up? It's Alexander Williamson here with the secret history inside of your aquarium and my aquarium. Today, I want to talk to you guys about something that's really important. It's going to affect your pocketbooks if you're a fish hobbyist, if you're an aquascaper, uh, if you keep shrimp or a betta or are a giant fish room owner. Either way, it's going to affect your pocketbook if you buy anything fish related probably. So that issue, I'm going to go over in this video pretty quickly. We're going to go over it and uh, I'll do a, 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 the, the bite sized version of it and then we'll go ahead and get a little more in depth. You can stick around for that if you want. So first of all, what is a tariff? Uh, that's what you need to know first. A tariff is basically a tax or a fee placed on goods coming from one place and entering another. There you go. I'm not going to get into political sides on this. I don't have time. I don't want to get into it. So <clears throat> a tariff is placed usually on goods to, to get people to buy goods from a from one source over another. So Village A makes really good metal uh, hammers and Village B makes okay metal hammers, but they make them at half the price. So Village A says, you know, none of our really quality hammers are getting bought. And so we're gonna put a tax on Village B's hammer makers so that if they try to bring their hammers into here, they're gonna have to pay the same price as our A-class, A-village hammers. And uh, so, you know, maybe a hammer's five bucks in village A and two bucks in village B. So they add $3 tariffs or tax, whatever you wanna call it, fee, to the hammers that are incoming. Now, oftentimes when that happens, village B is like, hey, we're making cheaper hammers for a reason here. You know, maybe they have more iron, uh, maybe whatever the reason is but they make those things and their price is set that way and maybe it's because of an unfair advantage and that's usually why tariffs are set is somebody's perceived that uh jobs or goods are not being bought and sold or used in uh one place over another pretty simple so the tariffs that we're talking about now are specifically having to do with Donald Trump's administration and China. So back a while ago, earlier this spring, and well, along his election trail, uh, he said that China is an unfair market force. So basically they're screwing up the world market according to him because they manipulate their money with their central bank. Now this is a whole other discussion and I wore my tie-dye to try to show you guys I'm not here to bore you to death. I'm here to just get these facts out, break them down and make them easy to understand, okay? So uh, basically he has been stating that their central bank has devalued their currency and because of that, that gives them an unfair advantage in the whole world. Also, you know, labor's cheaper, cost of living is cheaper because they are a more of a developing, what we used to call third world country. Um, and now they've come into the more first world or developed uh, nation standards. And so basically we have a deficit with them. We buy from them more than they buy from us, by a lot. And so he said, you know, you better make your practices and your banking and your money system more fair, more uh, overseen and like the rest of the world, or we're going to impose these tariffs. Uh, beyond that, there's a lot of politics with North Korea, with other things going on in the region, and all of that <clears throat> will play into this back and forth that happened. But long story short, Chinese goods under the Trump administration have had uh, tariffs placed on them. And so that means that certain things are going to cost more money to us. So in an effort to get U.S. Uh, aluminum, tin, metal, like steel, iron, uh, metal work uh, at a... To get the U.S. companies to be used more often than the foreign companies in these raw materials, Trump has placed a tariff on 
well, this is not just China, but this is all around a tariff, uh, and basically saying, we're going to charge you so that you're equal with what we can produce and manufacture these metals at. And so that way we're all on a fair playing field once you enter the U.S., even though it's not a fair playing field around the world. For reasons, like I said, it could be that their labor is cheap. It could be that they have a whole bunch of one thing and they're selling it for cheaper than we can sell it for. Uh, it could be shipping. It could be that they're just trying to undercut another region and uh, are willing to make less money. Whatever it may be, uh, it's it's kind of the opposite of uh, what we call free trade. And free trade is basically where you can have a country with, you know, maybe they have all the iron and steel in the world and uh, they can dig it up real cheap and they can sell it to the world for five bucks a pound or, you know, five cents a pound. And in the U.S., maybe it's two or three bucks a pound. And it's just like, well, we're going to buy our metal from them. But what happens if we don't like what they start doing politically? We can say, we're going to make it so we don't buy your metal anymore. And you guys are going to lose money because you, our Americans might as well buy American. Or maybe even we'll impose a tariff that's even more expensive than even. And then people will... Uh, in a free market, people supposedly always make rational decisions under uh, classical economic theory. We could get into Keynesian economics versus classical economics and uh, Austrian economics. If you guys want to really go there, we'll talk about it in the comments. But basically, what happened is that's ratcheted up. And now we're into, uh, there was a tariff of $20 billion placed on China. Then it went up. And it was placed around 25%. And by January, it will be 25% and then some, <clears throat> which means that your goods are going to cost more uh, coming out of China than they used to by at least 25%. And so that's probably more than you see on the shelf because basically... You know, when something comes in at wholesale, if it comes in for a dollar and sells for three at the store, they're probably going to, at the store, if it goes up to a dollar fifty, they're probably going to bump that up to, you know, six dollars at the store. So it can amplify up the food chain or the economic uh, ladder or pyramid, if you will. Uh, so basically, a lot of the stuff that you buy is coming out of China if you're in the fish hobby, including some pit, fish like uh, panda loaches, for instance. But the stuff that you really don't think of is pretty much everything electronic, okay, you guys? So pumps, filters, uh, you know, even brands. Let me grab something here. <clears throat> even brands that you think are made in the US, there's a trick. So maybe Aquion Glass we think of as made in the US. But it actually says made in Italy here. And so is it made in Italy or did Italy put parts together that were injection molded in China? Uh, and the electrical mini motors are probably made in China. I don't know. I, I haven't dug into every product, but you probably see what I'm saying here is if they have to pay more for their little mini motors inside of their uh, inside of their uh, powerhead pump, it's going to be passed on, and 25% more is probably what you'll pay. So the way that these tariffs are being phased in against China is that each year, so it'll start at 25% at the first of the year in January, but. That's, and that's January 2019, in case you guys are watching this in the future. Welcome to the future. Uh, by the way, <laughs> I'm glad we made it. Uh, so, basically, 25% January. The next year, it'll be 20. Then 15. Then 10. And that's dropping off. So, it's basically like, we're going to punish you really bad right now. And we'll ease off if you start doing what we say. <clears throat> or, you know, Trump has been kind of an uh, unexpected character sometimes. So he may say, we're adding another 10%. Take that 35%. But the thing that I want you guys to know is that I've talked to three local fish stores and that they have told me that already, before these tariffs are even implemented, they have their, their people that they order certain goods from just 
saying, please, you know, the little scissors, the rocks, the dragon stone, a lot of these things that you think of may come from Japan or, you know, something like that. A lot of them are outsourced and made in China, or maybe even they're taken over on a barge and then bulk sourced in China, plants are glued onto them, they're grown, Indonesia, China, Singapore, uh, Philippines, places like this. Uh, but that's all going to come back through China, and now it might actually find its way through another country, which is another workaround. So it may not impact us as hard in that there are a lot of companies like Fluval and uh, others that, uh, and this pump, for instance, where Italy is already the source, and Italy doesn't have a tariff with China, so it may not affect the price on that. But the net effect is buy American, right? That's that's the idea behind this is you'll buy more American and you will have uh, also punished another country or, you know, held something against them and uh, what is seen by Trump's administration as leveled the playing field. So I'm not getting into, there's a lot of generalization being said in this video and I don't want to get into all the details. I'm just trying to pass on what the end results could be. So basically, you're probably gonna have the price of a lot of things go up in the hobby. Tanks will probably stay the same because it's expensive to ship tanks. They make the glass here. They may make the little plastic rims or widgets or you know whatever, but the kits and stuff where you get the motor or, or anything with the motor, I should say, or a heater, a lot of heaters are made in China. Uh, a lot of lights, especially aftermarket kind of things, which, I mean, maybe that's not the right word, but things that people buy on eBay that are really cheap, like LEDs that are really strong lights, but maybe they haven't met all of the, uh, like, European standards for <laughs> safety and things. I'm guilty of having some of those. But the products like that will be going up in price, and they've already sent out notice to local fish stores. So I was talking to Dan Stern, uh, that's uh, Stern. He, he wanted me to make sure I got this right. So S T E A R N Stern at the uh, the local store in Seattle, the fish store, and he was the first one to say, "Hey, I just got this crazy call that they said everything's going up 25% out of China, and that's right off the docks, and that's before things hit. So they're trying to get as much stuff over here from China as they can right now before it hits. <clears throat> now." interesting stuff you can stop listening now you get the point if uh if you were here just to get the bite-sized meal of of the story basically but china has had a trade uh surplus with us a long time as i said the u.s has been recovering from a recession for like eight or nine years now uh since the 2008 recession 2009 housing bubble and we've expanded again now whether that's a bubble or whether that's growth whatever uh story for another video another day probably a different channel but uh it has turned out that china has 225.8 billion i've got some notes written down here so i'm not just guessing these but uh billion dollars we buy that much from china more than they buy of any of our stuff and last year it was 196. So this number has been going up steadily as we have more money. And China's economy has been, you know, for a while it skyrocketed up. But now it's kind of been just uh, cruising along, some ups and downs, some inflation, things like that. Um, and consumer goods on their end have not been picking up. So American brands that are luxury brands, that stuff's getting bought. Maybe some high-end ADA stuff. But... On our side now, it won't matter. Everything coming out of China that's coming from China to here will be expensive. And that's the way we have our trade routes set up right now is straight across the water. I live in Seattle. I see Chinese ships all day, every day on the water outside of the city of Seattle. Uh, Henan shipping all the time. <clears throat> so uh, what else was I going to tell you guys? So 14% uh, of of these uh, goods were being bought by the US in, uh, or by Chinese people, I'm sorry. 14% of these goods, these home goods and things were being bought 
by Chinese people from America over European countries and other importers. This doesn't count all the Chinese manufacturers. China is the biggest hub of manufacturing, and that's everything from, uh, you know, probably these little kits, things like this. I don't want to throw them under the bus. Maybe this isn't made in China. Uh, it is a company that says made in North America. That being said, a lot of raw chemicals come from China. They'll source them. They have a huge grasp on Africa. So you may not think about it when you look at your tank, but maybe the silica that makes the glass, maybe it's from Africa. There's been a shortage on silica for glass, for lower iron glass especially, so the ADA stuff. By the way, do you like my hands? It's for Halloween. <laughs> my wife and I got a pedicure, and they said, uh clear coat and i said no let's do a color and my wife said he'll have a clear coat and i said uh uh uh, uh. this is chinese nail polish i'm gonna soak it up i want to get my full you know amount she said he's joking yeah but look who's laughing now chinese fingernail polish that sparkles like my new blue hawaiian moscow guppy i literally got the same color i'm a fish nerd so back to the subject at hand the glass the low iron glass in the expensive tanks uh throwing that out there that i made that up but the the maybe the glass costs more because its component parts are from china <clears throat> and china does produce an immense amount of raw materials because not just china itself but rather they have established huge trade partnerships with Africa. So a lot of countries in Africa, uh, Mozambique, Zaire, uh, the Democratic Republic of Congo, uh, the People's Republic of Congo, uh, all these places that usually were too violent and unstable for the U.S. and Europeans to get into, China said, we don't care about your human rights violations, we'll come on in, buy your diamonds, whatever it may be. And uh, the U.S. either didn't see value or didn't have their mind focused on doing that. But now China has a foothold. They said, we'll, bu we'll build you stadiums. We'll build you infrastructure. And it's crazy that a stadium built in whatever, Mozambique, uh, Timbuktu, <laughs> I don't know where, uh, could have an impact on the price of a little motor in your fish tank in a really, really convoluted roundabout way. But... In any case, uh, China's central bank, Yu uh, Zhuang, uh, says that we are bullying China. It's totally unfair. And the other thing that he's come out and said is that uh, you're only going to shoot yourself in the foot. Prices always go up, but they usually don't come back down. And that's pretty true. Um, it's kind of interesting because if you think about it, uh, if a if a if a company if Flourish if Seachem for instance Flourish XL I'm just, I'm just picking up things around me and seeing where they're made you know this one's made in Georgia but where do they get their uh well actually ferrous gluconate they can probably manage here but uh <laughs> something more complex something that's manufactured and assembled this doodad that's injection molded for a filter. Uh, this kind of doodad, it is way cheaper to make in China uh, than here. This, I know for a fact, is made in China. So if you're buying cheap stuff on eBay or Amazon, it's going up in price in our hobby, and it's because of the tariffs. And this will affect us all in that if daily spending goes up, uh, you know, cost of living goes up, everything kind of goes up with it because people have less money to spend on other things. Things like fuel costs can get involved. And the other problem is that trade wars can kind of start with not just one country, but other trade blocks. So like maybe Russia, who is chummy with China, will say, uh, we're going to charge more for our natural gas. Now that doesn't affect us, that only affects Europe. But maybe that makes the price of shipping the Italian good more expensive to the U.S. So you guys see how this is all kind of coming around full circle? Uh, that is globalism and economics at a very basic level. But as Yu Zhuang, sorry guys, 
uh, was saying, it's hard to say with allergies and sinus trouble, but as, uh, as he was saying, so if a good goes up 25%, and uh, let's use one we know that's American. I'll stop picking on China. So a good, they say, Dr. Pepper, it's the fresh maker. And basically, this good is going up 25%. Are people still buying it? There'll probably be some people that fall off. But if it's a needed good, or if it's a good good, a quality good, sorry, a good good, uh, people will probably still buy it. And so at 25%, they may not buy the U.S. version. The whole thing might not have worked. It may not have punished China. They, they still probably won't have a good margin. Or maybe they'll have to drop their profit margin, uh, which... In that case, uh, maybe they can still go lower and still outcompete us. I don't know. We'll probably raise the tariff if that's the deal. But say people still want this Dr. Pepper. I still want my... Uh, I'm sure there's a lot of products I still want from China. Just look at a product in your fish room right now, please. Probably something is made from something in China or uh, assembled here. It'll say made in the U.S., Look into it, look into the parent companies, usually have parts in China. Just like we say, uh, you know, most Toyotas are assembled here. Well, the parts get shipped from other places uh, and then assembled here. So it's wherever the raw materials are in a lot of cases uh, that you want to think about because that really does factor into the price, especially if it's a simple thing that doesn't require uh, skilled labor. It's not being carved by hand and finessed. Um, so say this product that hasn't been carved by hand and finesse, doesn't need skilled tradesmen, has a machine that makes cans and then fills them with delicious, the best pop ever in the world, soda, Coke, whatever you want to call it, uh, Coke if you're in Texas. So goes up 25%, people say, oh, that sucks, but I'm going to keep buying it. So they drink it, they buy the Coke, eh, eh, eh. year goes by, and the people selling it realize, oh, people still paid that 25% extra, but now the tariffs come off. And maybe the prices come down again, right? Okay. Is the retailer going to bring the price down that 5 or 10%? Or will they still keep it at the higher price and pocket the difference now that people are used to it? So there's goods like bread, milk, corn, where we have these subsidies, which are different than tariffs, but they're in our own country. And that effect has happened where the government has helped and it keeps prices down because they pay farmers to do these things. Whereas a, a tariff kind of protects farmers from outside farms, soybeans and things like that. Uh, like soybeans is one thing that China does buy, um, as well as luxury goods. Uh, so... Basically, that's kind of the rub. That is what we worry about. That is how things will change. We've yet to see how it will all shake out. What products you'll find out may have had major parts in China or may have been assembled under one label and then like literally one piece is snapped on and put in a box and just put in a kit. And maybe three or four of those things in that kit that were the most expensive thing, like in a kit that's $300 for a fish tank, um, either the retailer is going to have to eat that cost and try to keep it down for the public, or they'll say, oh, China, the tariffs, uh, got to pay more guys, sorry. And when the tariffs come off, it's pretty easy to just justify that new price once people get used to it and pocket that money. So it's hard, as the Chinese uh, guy was saying, it's hard, guy, central bank, head of their central bank, it's hard to undo that, put the genie back into the bottle. Uh, so that is basically most of it. Let me double check if there's anything else that's just really important that I need to tell you guys. I don't think there really is, but uh, <clears throat> basically I've just been talking to my local fish stores and to some wholesalers in the area and some big names online and like that bring in things uh internationally and they were just saying there's a lot you don't realize that's made in china so i hope this was a little enlightening i know it was a lot of dry and uh economics and i probably didn't do enough economics in detail for those of you interested and i probably did way too much for those of you who just care about fish and couldn't care less about economics so i probably made a bunch of people unhappy but if you're still here please like, subscribe, and if you want to help fund the channel, especially with these tariffs coming, it's hard times. Uh, 
I do have a Patreon, and the link will be below. All right, guys, have a great evening, and I hope the tariffs don't ruin your fish hobby and life. Take care.